So in this Baldur's Gate vlog, there are going to be spoilers. I'm going to be talking about specific locations in the game and specific items in the game. I don't want to ruin that discovery. If you're just starting out on your journey, click to another Baldur's Gate video or check out my Baldur's Gate playlist where we explore some of the different character classes and strategies without any spoilers. So within that framework, I'm pushing out this spoiler because the focus of this vlog is quick leveling your character or getting ready to make a solo run through the game. And I define a solo run as one primary character. That's it. No NPCs. I mean, you could have some summons and some pocket pets and play with that, but essentially running through the entire game just by yourself. Now, there might be times where you have to make that decision. You want to hit up certain quests for items and experience. You might have to have someone in your party to do that. That's okay. I think of them as an NPC, but then I drop them very, very quickly. Or if you want to jump into the game, you've played through a few times, you want to jump into the game and you want to quickly level up. You want to get some experience points so this way you can build the party and make your way through the game. Certainly, you can edit your character. You could jump your stats. You could jack up your experience. But I like to do everything in game. I, I like to kind of focus old school from that perspective. So within that framework, a quick leveling boost. Here's how I go about it. So we exit candle keep. We do all that. And then from that point, I go to the temple map. And just to the east of the temple map, basilisks. There's a basilisk farm. Uh, there's kind of this crazy gnome mage there also who is um, going to attack you. But the curious part about this is there's an undead ghoul that wants to join your party temporarily. You could choose to attack him. You could choose to have him join your party. When he joins your party, he becomes a clickable NPC. Yes, I said we weren't going to have anyone join our party, but he's an NPC that you can just activate. But a timer begins. At some point, he's going to get very hungry and he's going to turn on you. So now what you can do on this map is you're level one. You've got no gear. You've got nothing. You're still rocking your quarter staff that you picked up at Candlekeep. You can lead the map with the ghoul and have him attack the basilisks. What's interesting here is, and you have to be very, very careful not to be targeted, the basilisk's gaze attack, that ranged gaze attack, doesn't turn him to stone. And he hits with paralysis. So you can have him attack a basilisk, paralyze it. He's getting gazed attacked by the other basilisks. You move him up, attack those other basilisks, and you beat on the paralyzed basilisk, you get all that experience. So you kind of go through edging the fog of war and there's some lesser basilisk. There's a greater basilisk. You will have to deal with that kind of rogue wizard um, and hit him with the ghoul and paralyze him and deal with him. That can be a little bit challenging depending on how you time it or as soon as he spots you first, he begins to initiate. But you can level up a massive dump of experience points all into one character. Uh, about, about west of the map, there is a party that you will encounter. That I want to avoid because I don't have any gear yet. And even as I'm leveling up quickly, uh, it's kind of the standard BG1 party where they've got a mage, they've got some sort of range, they've got a tough fighter. Without some gear and without some area of effect or invisibility, that can be a little bit of a challenging encounter. So I want to avoid that. And again, the timer with the ghoul is, yes, absolutely, I've got to complete that. So I farm the basilisk on the top. I go down to the right edge of the map. I farm the basilisks on the bottom. You now have a ton of experience points. Depending on the class, that can put you anywhere for level five, six, five or six, easily setting you up for seven. That gives you a nice base for a solo run, um, especially if you're going to go a, a solo, no reload type run. That at least gives you some base of hit points ready to go. Now, second to that, second to that, 
I do this, I tend to do this even if I'm playing a wizard or a sorcerer, although it's less needed for a sorcerer. But any other character class, absolutely. This is an item spoiler. Up at the friendly arm in, hidden to the right outside under a rock is a ring of wizardry. And uh, this is one of the more powerful items in the game. It gives you bonus spells. That, that's, that's huge in Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. But it's also worth an absolute fortune. And um, given how easy or how possible it is to rest those extra spell slots, look, I'm not saying don't take them. Absolutely, you want them. I want them. But the gold ratio allows me very, very quickly, if I sell it, high hedge, I go and sell it, that gold quickly lets me buy a few of the more premium magic items uh, available in the game for my character class. Again, boosting me fast and giving me a little bit of a cushion for a solo run. Um, if I'm playing a Shadow Dancer or a Thief-type character, I'm going to go and buy the Shadow Armor and I'm going to buy the Poison Dagger. Those two things alone, I mean, early on in the game, you can get those uh, selling the Ring of Wizardry and a few other items. I can grab both of those items before I even do the mines. So from that perspective right there, that is huge. The other thing with getting this quick experience boost with the Basilisk Farm is if I'm playing solo, and, and we explored this in the solo vlog that I pushed up without any spoilers, you're going to get a lot of experience fast. Even if I don't do the farm and I just kind of play the story linear, all the experience, all the encounters is going on me. So what this means is if I level up fast, I don't necessarily need to hit every little encounter. I don't need to beat on every kobold for like, you know, 10 experience points. I'm going to hit the cap pretty fast. If I gain that amount in the beginning and I, I power or speed level up, then in the mines and other places where there's just kind of these, these trash mobs and stuff, I can just skip them. I don't need to go through and I don't need um, to deal with them. So that's one way to get some gold. That is one way to kind of quickly power up and level up, putting yourself ready for that speed run. Kind of a secondary would be if you do allow some of the characters to join your party. I mean, in terms of narrative, not really, but have them join, take their gear and sell their gear. Uh, that's a very quick way also to get a little bit of coin. But from that perspective, from that focus, turning it over to my fellow BG enthusiasts, if you're going to play a solo character or you're going to speed run through it, or just you want to quickly level up early on just to get things going and have your gear without using editors, without doing something outside of the sandbox of the game, how do you level up? How do you handle that? And of course, um, picking up tomes. I want to pick up certain tomes at a bare minimum, uh, certainly charisma and then the primary stats of my characters that I'm playing whether it's going to be strength or wisdom or other aspects and constitution from that piece. So exploring that, how do you level up quickly? 